Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, this video is going to be different. It's definitely going to be a little longer. Make yourself a drink, make some popcorn, make a sandwich, whatever it takes. But we just had an awesome collaboration uh, with some other content creators here. In this video, we talk about drip. We talk about the animal farm. When we think we even have a little um, wager of when it's going to unpause. We talk about the markets right now. Today, there's been a big sell off of some of the big coins. It's Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the big ones, Binance going down. Um, I did a little um, shopping on some of those dips. And there's just a lot of great conversation about the macro. Where do we think things are going? When do we think the bottom is coming in? A lot of great stuff that I think you're all going to enjoy if you're on this DeFi world and especially in these ecosystems. But I want to make sure we cover number one. We had again with us the Crypto Cat. As I said, great. Uh, makes great content, great content. Make sure you like and subscribe to his channel. We also had Driptopian. He's an awesome guy from across the pond here in the UK. Definitely check him out in his videos, like and subscribe to him. And we had Scott, the investor, um, doing a lot of great things over a little bit on the uh, mountain time there in Utah. And again, everybody here makes great content, had great points, great thoughts. So make sure you like, subscribe to all their channels, as well as doing the same here, because if you've been here by now, before we start, you definitely should subscribe here and have been subscribed. So smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave us comments. Let's get this algorithm, get this in more people's hands. And of course, before I go to the video, links below for our Telegram group and links to join for all the different things we talked here and all the projects I'm on. would love to have you part of the team. So without further ado, let's get to it. So hey, everybody. Welcome back. This is Nick from DecryptoCat. We're back with the DeFi Defenders episode two. You guys really liked uh, seeing us all in the first episode. So we're back with some new special guests. But first, of course, we have uh, OXDR back with us. How are you doing today? Good. How's everybody going? Nice here from sunny Florida. Oh, yeah. Sunny Florida. Uh, and a special guest today, we have Scott, the investor. How are you? Doing well, man. Thanks for thanks for asking me to join. I'm out in Utah, and it's a nice sunny day out here. Glad to have you. And last but not least, we have the man from across the pond, Lee Driptopian. How are you? Very well, thank you. Nice to be here. The, the weather update is uh, pointless. Rainy, <laughs> cloudy, cold, England, Staffordshire, the way it is. Typical England, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, so we asked on um, the last episode, you know, just kind of went over everybody's uh, kind of crypto history, DeFi history. Uh, so since uh, Scott and Lee are new to the, to the DeFi, not new to the DeFi defenders, but to the episode, uh, why don't you guys give us a brief rundown? Scott, you want to start us off? Sure, I'll start us off. And it might be tough for you guys to tell between Lee and I, we're kind of indistinguishable with that. <laughs> He's going to be the one in the glasses. I'll be the one over here with the, uh, <laughs> with the purple purple accent light. So, uh, so I'm Scott. I go by Scott the Investor on uh, YouTube, and uh, I started I started in investing in crypto probably in 2011, 2012. I was picking up Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Litecoin, stuff like that. I was getting it super cheap. Little did I know that it was going to skyrocket the way it did. I did make some really good money on it back then, but it. Uh, it, you know, I, I bought a Bitcoin at 600, sold at 1200. I was like so stoked about my 100% return on that. And then, of course, it went up to 70,000. But that's kind of the, uh, that's kind of the beginning that got me started. Um, ever since then, I started really holding through the tough times and didn't sell and just waiting for those big rallies to be able to get out of it. I started in DeFi sometime maybe early summer of last year. So I've been in DeFi for a little over a year now and uh, found Drip in December and that's what led to me starting making YouTube videos on it and everything. Nice. What what year did you say you got started in crypto? It was late 2011, early 2012. Okay. So you're very early then. Nice. Yeah. Lee, how about you? Uh, I was a latecomer. Um, I had, like everyone, had opportunities to become involved in crypto through business friends back in 2014. Thought it was pretend money. Didn't really do anything with it and then i actually pressed the button in october 2021 and that was straight into DeFi. i didn't go bitcoin didn't go ethereum straight into DeFi. um my first investment was evergrow coin but we won't talk about it because <laughs> it's not where it should be but i moved on played with a few white lists made some decent money um 
I, I clocked about 80 grand's worth of profit in the first three months, just flipping, oh. flipping, flipping. Awesome. And then I knew Drip was around from the start, didn't do anything with it, and then finally pressed the button on Valentine's Day after a meal with the wife, said, let's just do it. Paid 122 for 122 each for 12 coins, tokens. And here we are today. So, yeah, I was, I was really late to the party. Um, do I regret it? No, because I'd have probably made some bad decisions in that time. But what, what, what are you talking about? We never make bad decisions here. <laughs> yeah, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was late, but I'm, I'm glad I'm here now. And this is where we all are. And the people that I've met, maybe I wouldn't have met if I'd have done it, you know, then. So each path is, is made for us, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know. If you may be late into the the crypto as far as the early adopters, but you're early in DeFi. Oh yeah, yeah, we all are. Speaking yeah. of speaking of being early, um, we're early in DeFi, but but the markets outside of DeFi are bleeding profusely. As I'm looking at the charts, Bitcoin is below nineteen thousand, down eight percent for the day. Ethereum is below a thousand dollars, down ten percent for the day. Um, but Drip is holding around ten dollars. What do you guys? What do you guys think of that? I think it's pretty crazy, actually. But it's just a testament to how strong the uh, how strong the ecosystem is. And I think I think down here, honestly, I think over the last six months, everybody has. Um, a lot of the weekends have sold out and they've drained their accounts and now they're getting pretty close to max payout because they weren't making additional deposits. So I think because nobody wanted to weather that storm, we're kind of sitting at the bottom where every time we dip down, we get $50,000 buy-ins or hundred thousand dollar buy-ins. You got whales just sitting on the sidelines waiting for those single digits. So could we go a little bit lower? Sure. But I don't think we will. If the animal farm launches, I think if the animal farm does get launched on time and there's no further delays, then this thing immediately starts to pick back up. You got to think in the in the grand scale of things from a macro level, everyone's losing in all cryptos across the board. So people are, most people, at least half the people, probably more like 80%, have invested money they really couldn't afford to lose because they thought, you know, Bitcoin's super safe or this is super safe. So when they start to see that money go out the door, everyone starts to pull their assets from everywhere, including drip. So we saw a pretty big dip along with the market, but now we're holding steady. And I think it's because everyone sees a, the potential of an ecosystem that can earn you 1% per day and be pretty stable over time. I think yep. we seem the same with pigs, haven't we? The, the steady you know, decline in the pig's price. And I always talk about price and value. So if you see the value of something, then obviously, <clears throat> and like I say, being new to this, I'm not new to business. I've got my own business and I know how these things work and people will paper and out or, and I don't mean that negatively because everyone's got their own money that they might need, which they didn't have last year, cost of living versus crypto and all that stuff. I get it. But the pig's price is obviously ratcheting down because of this uh, 2% a day you know, um, withdrawal limit that you can get your pigs out of the pen. And I actually like it because it stops me from being emotional. Like, instead of just saying, right, today I'm going to rip out 100 pigs. It's kind of giving me the, you know, the, the red button say, hang on, do you really want to do this? And then after a few days of withdrawing, mm, I quite like my position because we know the games are coming. We know what Forex is planning. We've got, some decent timelines. Scott, you said in your video regarding the um, CMO and project managers, you can clearly see Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. When he said that last night, I was like, hang on, it's Friday. <laughs> and if the drip garden is released today, it's Saturday. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's big. I mean, I think that's part of the reason drip is going to do well. I think if we continued the way we were, I still think people would find value, but you know, we may hit a bottom at, at four or five dollars. Uh, but we've been pretty critical of Forex and the system, you know, really, uh, we've given a lot of praise for all the stuff he's done right, but people have been pretty critical for some of the stuff he's done wrong, and understandably so. We got a bunch of money dumped in there, 
but hiring a project manager, getting a real marketing team on board, hiring a couple extra devs. So he's not doing, you know, most of it himself, or if you've got one dev out, like BB takes a break to spend some time with family. Now everything's delayed six weeks. Like that stuff's really frustrating. And it's, uh, when you've got a really volatile, emotional investor base anyway, right? Most of us are pretty level-headed, but you guys see our comments. Everyone's in there freaking out like the sky is falling. Uh, they can't wait two weeks for you know a new update to come out. Um, you got to have pretty regular updates. You got to have a pretty regular uh, 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 cadence for when you're announcing stuff and then when ac stuff actually get, gets rolled out. So adding those members to the team, I think is going to be big. And I think it's one of the main reasons that uh, the drip's actually going to do well this summer. Yeah. I, I think it goes without saying that um, this, uh, these additions to the team are uh, later than what was needed, but I'm glad to see it happening. Finally. Uh, it's definitely a, a sign that he's, you know, taking things really seriously and, and, either taking our comments or realizing that he can't do everything himself. Um, and it, it, in tracking back a little bit, I, I agree with you, Lee, that the the pig vesting uh, was a good call. You know, a lot of people were upset, of course, initially, but like you said, it's it's it prevents you from making bad decisions too fast. And it's like having a, a shopping list where you add stuff that you want on there, but you don't buy until you look at it the week after. Uh, just to make sure that that's something you really want. So it's 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 good, um, and I think that's a clear indication of what we're seeing on the chart. It's just a slow, you know, two percent every day. Uh, people of selling that that want to exit the system for whatever reason. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the, he's going to do with dogs because he's. It sounds like he's going to do a vesting thing for dogs as well. Um, I have I no idea might. what he's going to do for that yet. I think he might do a vesting model for the dogs because. History repeats itself, whether it be crypto or in real life. And I think that the issue that we've got with, with the emotional investors is, yes, they're still moaning or people will still moan that it's 2% a day. It takes you 50 days to get your money out. I mean, I struggle to get my savings out of the this building society that I'm in. You have to go in with your book, explain why you're taking it out, where you're gonna do, what you're going to do with it, where you're going to put it. Yes, I can take it all out. But when it comes to crypto, obviously there's a lot more emotion involved with, with your investment because I mean, it's different for me because it, I have faith and I have trust. Um, and if something stops me or not stops me, slows me down on making that bad decision to, to come out of it, like the emergency withdrawal, people are saying, how do you do this? How do you do that? I can see with the dogs maybe being a little less aggressive. Um, you know, he, he's learned from, people moaning about two percent maybe he'll do a five percent per day i don't i mean no one knows do they but i would be happy with with anything at the moment uh anything that gets the farms open because as soon as that opens that opens us all up the racetrack again the analogy it's once we get there i think people might not even care what's vested as long as we can use the ecosystem again i don't know yeah i just want to add something a little bit myself um i mean just from what you guys are saying, you're all right on point. And I mean, Forex, right? His background is in a lot of traditional finance and hedge funds and um, venture capitals, capitalists and all that kind of stuff. So think about hedge funds. Hedge funds don't allow you to just sell your assets. You know, if they take in a couple of billion dollars and you want to withdraw, they usually give you two times a year. They cap you to a certain percentage because they are leveraged. They have shorts, they have this, whatever, and it's going to mess up what they have in place. So he's trying to do the same thing, which makes a lot of sense. Then, of course, right, we have this bear market. Um, things are going on outside externally, you know, everywhere, UK, US, inflation, et cetera. There's just a lot going on. And there's a lot of capitulation where people are just finally giving up and wanting to sell. And that's usually what happens as we get closer to an end of a bear market. So I think, like you said, you know, Lee, it's basically... It's a good thing to keep people a little bit slowing down, keep them a little bit on on pace there. Um, I'm I was looking at the pigs price um, on deck screener, and I was noticing that you know it was going down three to four percent a day on price wise, and now it's dropped to only about two percent a day. So the percentage mm -hmm. daily has actually started to slow down. As you said, the ones who wanted to sell have pretty much already done so and moved on, hopefully. And I think now the ones who see the long term value, see the farms coming back up 
are going to hold. And it's also going to be everything is going to wrap right back, back around to drip, right? Drip has that two places. It has BNB, which it's susceptible to right now with the price movements. But you have that sword and shield when you have the BUSD pools, which also helps give sustainability. So, I mean, he knows the, the smartness of the game. And then going back to what Scott said, too, and to find to finish up here is that people like him who are really smart and have a lot of great things, sometimes it's hard to let go and to trust others and to hand it off to a team that you can't do everything. That's one of the hardest things. I owned a business years ago. And the hardest thing for me to do is let go of things and trust in others so that I could focus on the upper level things. And the more he trusts and lets go and focuses on the upper level where he excels, it's only going to be that much better for everything going forward. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's tough. That's just growing pains. I think Forex is a is a trader. So he used to be in more of a lone wolf, right? He's doing his systems. That, that's a solo sport too, especially uh, trading Forex in particular. So for, for you to build a small business, he's going to be going through those growing pains where he needs to find people that he feels like are at, uh, at the equivalent talent level they need to be for a project this important. Because in DeFi, one thing gets messed up, your whole project's done forever. In business, you can kind of come back from that, right? Accounts don't get drained. Capital doesn't get compromised. So it's a, it's a much different world. And I think um, just in terms of investing, I mean, uh, Forex is probably a very patient, very good investor, you know, invest a lot of Forex and stuff. I think that, um, I think that people don't understand when they're getting into these projects that, that they're longer term trades and they're trying to get out of trades right in the middle. Like you said, with, um, uh, with uh, like hedge funds, if you're putting your money in the hedge fund, that's a longer term play and you can't just cut in the middle of it because they're, they're doing, uh, what's called, uh, what's it called? I forget the name right now, but I'll remember it's dynamic delta hedging. I think dynamic delta hedging. They're basically playing all their trades off each other so that they can minimize their risk and keep it in the middle. But some of those trades are thirty day trades, summer day trades. Everything's in, you know everything's on its own time frame. So if you uh, if you try to shortcut that, then you're getting out of trades in an you know in an improper time frame and you're losing money. So the way he thinks is probably more longer term. How are we going to get from here to here? The way a lot of these investors are thinking is how can I quickly turn pigs into, you know, from 200 bucks into 400 bucks. And I think Forex intentionally rewards the people that are in it for the longer term. Yeah. The DGENs definitely are moving around and they want to see, you know, you see in the chats, right. All the yeah. memes and when Lambo and all the different stuff. And it's like, Forex definitely you could tell that when it comes to investing he he's learned probably through his career not to be emotional investing I don't see him having emotion in it he sees the long-term vision he knows where it's going to go he knows markets are going to crush he knows they're going to come back again in the future he's like you said Scott he sees where things are and the dgens are the ones that are like moving around and basically in the long run playing out but he even said it he said he doesn't want us he wants to support the long-term holders right the ones who really see the vision so yeah, exactly. So you guys are, I know you guys are invested in other uh, DeFi projects. How would you compare like the other things that you've seen from, from those projects, like especially from the, the main developer uh, versus Drip and Forex? Hmm. Well, I'm in, I'm in one project that I put on my, my drip channel. It's the only one I'm going to put on that channel because it's not a direct competitor. It's not a fork. It's not a cloud. And it's called um, Y5, Y5 Finance. And they are going to be a regulated UK, uh, UK regulated central exchange, centralized exchange with a GBP stable coin, which is backed by fiat, not algorithmically. And they've just bought out their BNB which is called the Y5 TT trader token. Now, when it comes to, to the way that they deal with things, they, they have a serious um, company based in London that is dealing with all of the, the back-end stuff and helping them with integrating traditional finance into crypto. So they've got a team that, that is, you know, miles deep. So it's a little bit different because the, the money that's behind it you know, it's it's backed by real businesses, a company called the Albany Group, huge firm, and they've got experience in integration and stuff. So they're using that, the Albany Group, as a support to the 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 token. Um, and basically what 
obviously at the moment because of what's happening they are really strict on what they're doing and what they're saying so you won't hear from them every day but you will hear from them and when you do hear from them it's a it's not a timeline it's more this is what we're going to do and we're going to do it by quarter four there's no like you know the 10th of december is is quarter four right but because it's a little bit different to drip and and obviously the way forex is doing it i can already see that you know that forex is implementing a similar strategy by bringing on all these extra people like everyone said here today the fact that you know we've gone two or well what was it, two weeks before we had an update and everyone was in the chat what's happening what's happening forex speak to us and his posts are a little bit more structured. They're not giving exact dates, but they're saying, this is what we've done. This is what we're going to do. You know, there's no major rocket ships to the moon or any of that. It's just, it's a little bit more strict. And it, I think maybe that is an influence from other parties that might be assisting in in the way that Forex speaks. But the crypto um, projects, I mean, outside of the DRIP ecosystem, they're not performing as well as Drip for me personally, because I'm still getting my 1% a day. I'm still getting my 3% a day in the garden. And obviously we'll touch on the garden in a little bit, but I'm mega bullish on the garden at the moment. I wasn't, but now I am. And I've recovered my position by one and a half X because I was, I was harvesting and then buying Drip. I was splitting the LPs, Drip. And then with the BUSD, I was buying Drip, but obviously that's a different, different thing. But yeah, outside of the Drip network, I've got some long-term holds. So at the moment, I'm talking March, April next year. So it, to me, I, I, I haven't checked the charts in weeks. I, I'm not really bothered. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to play out. But at the moment, drip, I mean, if my force it now has got, I haven't compounded for a, a day and a half, maybe two two days. And I've got like $450 sitting there. There's nothing else that I'm holding is giving me that kind of payout. So um yeah I'm I'm still bullish and always will be. For sure. I think uh I think the difference with what I'm seeing between Forex and a lot of these other developers aside from aside from what you're talking about Lee I think that's going to end up being really big and possibly a you know a competitor in the long term on BNB scale. But most developers that I'm seeing and most of these projects that come out they're they're one and done so even if they come out and they're successful they just have one play to them, right? You just put BNB in and you get BNB out. There's nothing else. There's no other portions of the ecosystem. Um, they're they're making updates here and there, but there's no real like long term changes in innovation. So while the the initial DAP that they launched is innovative and it's a little bit different, I mean, there's a handful out there, and and I know a lot of you guys are in them. Um, there's no next stage yet. And so some of them are pretty pretty new, so we got to give them time to see if they continue to develop. Uh, but I don't see anyone else in the system, um, you know, in the space, I should say, creating ecosystems. And so to me, I think that's part of the reason that Drip's going to survive is uh, Forex is constantly rolling things back into each other, requiring dogs to do this. You can now use your Drip BUSD to do this. There, there's he's creating so many reasons to hold the tokens and keep everything in the ecosystem. And I just don't see anyone else really doing that in the space right now. Um, even with some of the drip forks, some of the drip forks are great. Um, and you know, their UIs are amazing and their teams seem like they're amazing, but, uh, but they still have to go in and innovate and start new things. And so I think that's where Forex really leads the pack. And I think he wants to, you know, he wants his legacy to be a big stamp on DeFi, maybe like one of the first developers who really made it mainstream and uh, his innovation is what's going to get him there to that status. Yeah, yep. I agreed. I think um, I think the ecosystem that he's building is really going to really going to long, the longevity of of the system because, um, like, rec the recent one is Stake, right? Stake protocol. Uh, it's similar to Drip, but it bring also brings in the the rebase tokens uh or chains or rather like safu and that's an interesting play for sure it's it's a little bit innovative but but again it's like what goes where's the uh where's the utility and that's that's where everything has to lie is if there's no utility then the systems is gonna burn out pretty quick um and we just have to hope that we can take profits early so i think i think what forex is doing is really really says something and i think too that 
while Drip wasn't the OG because the OG was what bankroll flow or something. Yeah, um, flow, I guess. The the fact that Drip is still going uh, over a year later, and we've had several other clones of Drip, um, you know, that really says something to to the whole ecosystem. Yeah, I think just to touch on real quick, sorry to jump in, but um, utility, let's let's give all these developers the benefit of the doubt. Real utility is the hardest thing to create. Um, everyone creates these dApps. Everyone wants to jump in because there's a good return. That gets the excitement going, but then you've got to deliver on the utility. And it's really hard to, it's really hard to create that. I mean, that's why the lending is just a, you know, a mind-blowing concept that should be extremely successful for Drip and everyone will copy once it's done. Uh, the lottery tickets are are amazing because we're, we're all at least a portion degenerate and we all like to gamble a little bit. Um, and the fact that he can license or white label that for all these other platforms allows everybody to get in. I mean, those are real utility cases that will be really helpful. Of course, you got the city of Atlanta stuff whenever that comes online and then some additional uh, use cases that they're putting together. But creating utilities by far the toughest part, toughest you know piece of making these projects successful. So um, I'm interested to see what some of these other projects like Stake and Avarice and any of these other ones, if they can create real utility over time, uh, I'm interested to see that because that will give us some ideas on where we could potentially go in the DeFi space. It's so early, super early. Right. Yep. And I just want to touch, so say that, yes, you know, I, my main position, 50, 60%, and probably at least, is in Forex's ecosystem with Drip, Animal Farm, Piggy Bank, you know, I have some of the Drip Garden, et cetera. And I want to continue to be that. But like we were talking about earlier, I kind of look at myself sometimes as maybe being like a venture capitalist, right? So that means every now and then I want to take little chances in other protocols and see how they do. But when I do those, because they don't have the backing yet or they haven't proven the sustainability yet, I do look to try to ROI quickly. You know, I, I want to invest, I want to compound claim, compound claim, and pretty much alternate it almost daily to look to get that ROA back and then go, okay, if I'm ROI, now I can play with the house's money and see what happens. You know, I'm not draining it because that's not fair. You don't want to do that to a system because that's, you know, we all should be responsible when we're investing. But I do want to claim a little more often, like drip, I just keep compounding. You know what I mean? But these others, I do take some days to claim because I want to get that back to have that funds available. And then, like you said about utility, we don't know. And talking about other projects, the ones you just mentioned, you know, I I think it has possibility, you know, like anything else. But if you guys have heard or seen like that ooze finance, I've heard about it. I wasn't sure about it. Then um, shout out to JC Crypto also reaching out, letting us know about that too, to let them know. But what I, as I researched it and read through the white paper and did my due diligence, I realized it's a little different. And I don't want to go off topic here. If anybody wants to know more, they can always check out on channels and stuff. But the thing is, your investment's tied to an NFT. It's not tied to your wallet. And the NFT has value. You can actually sell your NFT if you need to get out and let someone else take over that account. There's so many things you can do with it that, you know, if anybody's interested, just go look it up later. But that's, you know, I just want to at least mention it. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a super interesting model. And uh, yeah, shout out to JC Crypto. He uh, He's always bringing some interesting information to the chat for us. Yeah, he, um, he's helped me a lot, actually, JC, because... I struggle with NFTs. I, I don't mind saying anything on camera, me. You know what I'm like. If I, if I think it, I'm going to say it. And I said to him, look, I, I don't know anything about it. So he, I sent him the USDC, $400 worth, and he's done it all. He sent me like a little, like, talk to me like I'm five, um, little <laughs> package in my messages. <laughs> I still don't know what, what I'm doing with it, like, but the bloke has spent his own time you know, he's, he was just about ready to get to uh, the beach on holiday. He's done my NFT. He's done my, you know, investment, whatever you got to do with it. And I am reading on it because I was sold on the on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme. The, the devs are called after, you know, they're named after all the turtles. So with the 8-bit gaming theme, I, I quite like it. So I threw 400 at him and, and see where it rolls. But yeah, again... Big shout out to JC because he's he's looked after me and and that means a lot to me. If someone's going to spend their time, you know, like we do with people in Telegram and emails and comments and all the rest of it, um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, we have gone off track, but that's just my shout out to JC because he's helped me. No, he's awesome, and I think it's a testament to the community. 
I think all these guys, you know, he's an OG dripper. He's been been around yeah. for a while, and it just seems like everybody in this community actually wants to help each other, and uh, it's real helpful because we all have questions. None of us have this all figured out, and so if yeah. we can com- combine our brain power, then then it's uh, it's going to do the world some good. Wait, we're not experts. <laughs> we're all experts in one category <laughs> not all of them well shit i mean i i uh that's why i made a youtube channel right because i'm i'm a crypto expert <laughs> yep <laughs> i don't think people even want to hear experts i think for the most part the people that get the views are just the people that uh that tell their story and uh and that's it because I, I think people i mean you want to listen to an expert sometimes i don't mind watching some videos but I like watching the videos of people that are in a similar, you know, I like watching your guys' videos. You're in a similar situation as I am with a similar right. amount of drip and we're all have a similar uh, risk tolerance and everything. So, you know, we're kind yeah. of in the same spot. So it's nice to go through that battle with, with, with everyone, what you're trying, what worked, what didn't, what got rug pulled. Um, it, you're more, it's just a little more real when people are going through the same cycle that you are, right. You're on the same chapter of your book as they are. You're not the, you know, super whale that's can give out 50 drip, you know, every time you do an airdrop, we're still working our way to the top. It's a support mechanism, isn't it? It's, yep. it's, it's, a, it's a support mechanism as well as, you know, an educational journey. Cause I, I often, you know, sometimes I get up bullish every day. I say every day, most days, should I say, mm-hmm. and then, the odd day I, I get up and I'm like, you know what? Can I do a video today? Can I be the person I want to be today? And then I'll talk to one of you guys or someone in Telegram. And then if they, you know, they they come at me with the support and say, well, you know, look at this, look at it this way. I think, you know what? Switch my mindset, and then I'm back on track. And that's not just oh, foul mouth, foul mouth, foul mouth every day because you know we all talk about the way it is. Is it bad today? Well, depends what you declare as bad because you've got to put a label on something, it might not be as bad as you think. Because if you'd have told me when I bought in originally at 122, and I know guys who've bought in at 170 or 160, you know, late 160s, if you'd have said it's going to be 9.30 to, to 10.30 in and out, I would think the world had ended. But because at the time I couldn't see the power of compounding, the power of building a team, because that's taboo as well, which we've spoke about. Like, there's nothing wrong with building a team because... You guys have said it on your videos. If I'm going to spend 16 hours in here a day, if I went back on the tools out there, it, it, I'll be making a lot more than that. So it's nothing It's nothing to do with the money or the exactly. referrals. It's, it's to do with the value that I believe that people need to grab from YouTube, whether it's in times of elation or in times of trouble. And that's what I view this YouTube thing as, and that's why I watch all of you guys, because... You know, I, I started back in, it was October when I pressed the button, but it was September when I was looking at YouTube and it was this to the moon and that to the moon, which is great on a bull run. Like you saw in November with Bitcoin at 69 K that's, that was my first actual experience of learning charts. I've read all my little books here. Look, Scott, you'll be proud of me. There we go. And, um, I just thought that you put your money in and you took more out. I was one of the FOMO kids. But as I've grew and, and you know grown and and learned, it's about value. Value is just the biggest part of this thing for me. And when I click on YouTube now, I've whittled it down to like you guys and people who are like minded, who actually give me the good, the bad, and a little bit of ugly. But as long as you don't put it out there, like you know, um, I don't like the word. I don't like the. the the FUD thing, but I say it all the time. I don't really like it. But if I've got a constructive a constructive concern, criticism, sorry, I will say to you, lads, like, what do you think of this? If you give me a valid answer saying it's bad, but this is how you got to look at it, that's kind of how I've molded myself and as I'm learning every day because I'm not an educator. I want to be educated every day. So I think people who do get a little bit more emotional than than I am, or you are, or the next man, or lady, they maybe need to do a bit more listening and learning before, you know, smashing on the keyboard. Because I'm just a bloke who who sits in Stafford and and tells you what I think, not what I know. So it's good to have the support of, of people around me. 
I like it. A great example of that for me was the printing tokens, right? And and luckily I've been investing long enough to not let initial knee-jerk reactions affect me, right? Hey, we're printing tokens. I wasn't like, oh, you know, this thing's going to go to zero. Um, instead, went into the chats with some of you guys and said, what impact, what impact is this really going to make? Like, let's work through it, right? And a lot of you guys made really good videos on it. We talked about the different liquidity pools, how when that white paper was originally written, you know, we were just running everything off BNB. There's just a lot of stages to that. So then once you educate yourself, you can uh, remove a lot of the motion from it. Um, so for me, after looking into that and getting some takes from you guys, I realized it really ultimately wasn't that big of a deal. And it was nothing to freak out about. But if you saw the futters in the chats, they were just blowing it up like trips going to zero because they have to, to mint tokens. But those people more often than not are just undereducated and maybe they don't want to take the time to educate themselves or uh, maybe they just don't have the mental capacity to do it. But I think for the most part, um, the folks that are calm in the chats have done the research or if they've done it and they found that they it's a, not a project for them, they're not around commenting on everybody's video. They're just going to take their money out and then they're going to move on to the next project. They don't have time to uh, jump on every single one of your videos and put a dislike, right? I think we all get the same amount of dislikes on probably every video. And it's probably the same six people that will go to the video, you know, thumbs down, go to the video, thumbs down. So mm -hmm. I think the educated people are in a better position and, um, and that's us too. We need to educate ourselves. And that's why we have some private groups where we can break down some of these more complicated concepts and then try to relay that information mm -hmm. on YouTube to people. And, you know, I don't want to say layman's terms, but something that's more easy for people to understand. Here's why it's a big deal. Here's why it's not. Yeah. That's, that's one of the exact reasons I made the DeFi defenders group. Um, you know, we're, we're all watching each other's videos already and, and it's such an easier way to, just go on our Telegram group and talk to each other that way than uh, trying to reply through comments on, on our videos. Um, so it's been a great resource for me and I'm sure the rest of you, uh, it's just uh, it's just been awesome to see. And guys, uh, for our viewers out there, if you are if you have a DeFi channel, Drip channel, uh, anything YouTube, uh, DeFi related, and wanna join our DeFi Defenders group, uh, send one of us a, a, a private message on Telegram and, and we'll send you the private link for it. We'd love to have you. Uh, there's a couple I've been trying to uh, trying to get hold of. We're still trying to get Stun a Breezy in there and a couple other really good <laughs> drip channels that we'd love to have you. But we have over 25 people in there, 25 channels represented. So please, uh, if, you have, if you have a channel and would like to join us, uh, just send one of us a message. And along that line for the other viewers that don't have a channel, if uh, you guys have a particular channel that you'd like to see on the next DeFi Defenders episode, uh, please let us know and we'll we'll do our best to get them on the next ones. We're, uh, we're aiming to do these every other week or so. So it should be fun. Yeah, channels, yeah. topics, whatever. No, absolutely. And, I, and the thing for me is like, you know, I never thought I would be making videos. I have a good experience in regular traditional investing. Um, I just said, let me just start sharing and just start talking and just speak for myself. You know, just talk what yeah. I see, what I think, what my thoughts are and see what happens. I had no idea what was going to happen. Like probably the same with you guys. And, you know, I started getting comments back. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate your perspective or just being honest or not, you know, just giving a true thought or opinion or something I didn't think of. And I learned from all you guys, everybody else too, like, you know, we all said, and Lee was saying earlier too, you know, sometimes, sometimes you need to hear something else to help you in your own thought process. If you're stuck somewhere and you see other views, like, you know what, you're right. And I already know that. So why am I stuck here? And it helps you kind of get back on track. Sometimes you get in your own head and that's why I like doing it. You know, people still feel that like they're getting value people feel they're getting some honest opinions like us in our group the people who just share the true thoughts and what they see and what they feel rather than constantly just shilling 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 and no matter what ignore everything you know like that those are the ones that i think you know will continue to have people wanting to gravitate to and if they're doing that now in this bear market we know everything goes in cycles, right? People, like I said, this capitulation right now, I shared a while back um, a graph on that. And Forex has said it before, when things go up, people can't help themselves. They're going to FOMO in. This is the way it's going to work. So when things turn around, that's what's going to happen, both for all of us, for our channels, but for these ecosystems, both for the investors. It's just, we got to get through what is, what is it, you know, basically, I, I love um, analogies and certain little phrases. And it's like, right now, 
things are going down and things are a little rough and it happens, but these are the times that make people, and these are the times that are going to make you, especially if you've been through the cycle, Scott, you know, you said you've been through the cycles, you've seen some of these things before long-term mm -hmm. and you need some pressure to make diamonds, right? So right now this is the pressure. Yeah. And the average people, the average person, the average investor, the average per just in general, the average person isn't up for the pressure at the office at work. They're not up to, to uh, failing over and over again. So they, they just stop trying. Right. Um, same thing with investing. They're not, uh, they're not okay to get beaten down for six months or a year during a bear cycle um, and accumulate during that period. They're not, they don't have the, uh, the fortitude, the mental fortitude to like hang through those really tough times, but those are the people that get rich. So the 10% of us that are watching these videos and like, yep, I get the mindset. It's a tough time right now. I'm just going to accumulate here in the bottom. And then when everything cycles back up, I'll have the bigger bag. Um, I just think that most people don't have that same level of grit and the people that do are the ones that are going to end up rich and successful in life. Yep, those who accumulate in the bear markets and are in things that have real value. I mean, you can't just buy anything, of course, but if you're buying things that are really good and have solid background and you're buying them in these bear markets, that is where they're going to make out. Um, you don't make money in the bull markets. You make money in the bear markets, setting yourself up for the future run. So with, with that said, um, if you guys... Well, rather, if somebody, your friend came to you and said, I had $1,000 to invest, uh, I was, you know, they were looking at the drip network uh, in all the other parts of the ecosystem. Where would you tell them to put the money? I'm interested to hear everyone's answers here. I'll let you guys go first. <laughs> well, I have got a friend who, who, I wouldn't say he's got a grand, but he's probably got 600. So we'll just use that as, as an example. Now, what I said to that person was, for me, obviously, drip is the safest of the ecosystem. So I would probably park three quarters of it there. So 75% in the faucet. And then 15% into the piggy bank, because I see that as obviously not safer than the garden, not less safe. I don't mean anything, you know, but it's obviously a little bit more adaptable to market conditions. So I'd probably I'd say 15% of it in the piggy bank um time locked for six months because he's not very patient so instead of going full bore just half and half it and then the rest into the garden as a leverage play on drip because i do believe that the garden which we'll come to is gonna have its time again um now i'm talking about the the drip ecosystem here not crypto as a whole because he wants to be involved in this right um so i've basically told him to to use drip as the safer part which i think we can all agree it is because obviously none of this is financial advice i'll say it for you all before anything happens do your own um, research but yeah he 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 wants to get involved it's risk capital so he said if i lose it i lose it but if i win i win so what i've explained to him is it's not a case of you can put your money into the forces and then just claim everything out like we saw the the screenshot i think most of you saw it where one of the chaps said, I think he was about two and a half thousand drip. His max payout was 10,072, some, or, you know, whatever the number was, 5,072. And he claimed up to his max payout on a two and a half thousand faucet. So obviously he wasn't educated by the people he was a, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a, like a team member of. He was then re-educated. He has now started hydrating. And he said, I wish someone had told me. Now, you can take from that what you will. But for me, he's gone in, he's left it, and then just been clicking claim, 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 and sell, claim, and sell. So I've explained to the person who said, what if I put, let's call it, the $1,000 in? My stance would be what I've just said. But the issue I think we're finding is people will say they're long-term when they're in, in the FOMO stage. But when it comes to this stage that we're in, they are no longer long-term. They become, well, I suppose it's bulls and bears, isn't it? They're a bull in the FOMO market, and they switch to a bear in, in the bear market and want everything out because the delayed gratification angle of, let's say, drip is less attractive in a bear market. And unfortunately, 
no matter how much I have educated some people, they will, you know, try and claim and sell, claim and sell, claim and sell, but then blame Forex and the price for not being able to ROI as quickly as they want now, but not when they first put in. Because it was a 12-month plan when they put it in. And I always say, it's called drip, not flush. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, it's funny you say that. And shout out to uh, to Drip Network. What is it? Dripnetwork.ca. Mm. That's a fantastic site that allows you to break things down. But once they launched that and they launched that extra piece, so you could go take a look at the activities of your team. I was going in and I saw many, many people that I know personally that I got in that said, I said, hey, if you get in this investment, like plan on not touching it for at least six months, at least six months, just hydrate for six months. I looked at a lot of them within two weeks, they were already claiming. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you guys sat here and told me, I, I, I'm like, do not try to pull this money out within the next six months. Growing it is what's actually going to build it over time. And they're all wondering why they lost money. But you guys probably saw my video the other day where I broke down when I got in and the fact that the price has fallen 82% um, from where I got in at, but yet I'm net positive by 40% on ROI basis in six months. Uh, that just happens through compounding. So I think that's, uh, you know, that's key. Most people, even though they're telling you to their face, yep, I've got a long-term mindset. As soon as the ticker goes negative, everyone wants to get out and they're just, you know, claiming. But what about you, doctor? You know, that's the big thing is, you know, people, money as human beings, our brains is not capable of not getting emotional with money. It's hard to keep that focus. It's just, the, that's why you have the cycles. That's why how the things work. And it's, I've seen it. Um, and I've been involved for many years before with that. And I agree, like for me, I would say, sure. My thing would say half drip because it's good to have money that you're putting into something that helps you stay in it longer term. Like in a sense, you know, it's, you can't just pull it out. You can't just withdraw it. You have to work the system, even if you are hydrating or if you're claiming or whatever you're doing, but I, obviously you want to hydrate. And I, I'm in the piggy bank. I had um, a strategy that I can't do yet that I'm waiting forward to do. You know, my strategy, the piggy bank was I have different time locks set up there. So if I was saying that, I would say 25% there for the other rest so far, because I have different levels of my time lock set up. And my strategy thought was compound claim, compound claim when I could start claiming some, build up LP tokens, and then create another stake on the back end and build a snowball compound claim, compound claim, build, build up enough LP, do another stake on the back end. And if I just keep looping that and then keep doing time locks, eventually you get to a point where you just kind of snowball and you compound, you build this big, you know, you're not gonna do it forever. I don't want to see 50 stakes in my, um, my, my, in my, my UI there, but do it for a point where you really build that up. And then I really like the farms. I really like the fact of, you know, dogs getting pigs because the pigs, you know, the pig pen will come around when everything is running and it'll, it'll pay higher and give people incentive to not sell and kind of do the long term of just earning off of your assets like Forex's vision is where you just you know you live off the dividends. You know, that's his vision of long term of how most big whales and big, you know, wealthy people, how they do things. Um, so I do like the farms and I do like having that. I think dogs, you know, even though we don't know what's going to happen with the price, how it's going to happen with the um way we're going to be able to claim or how it's going to, the whole thing's going to be. But I like that. I like the farms. I like the dogs, or, you know, farming for pigs. And, you know, I have, you know, single stake and the dogs BNB and dogs BUSD and all that. And I had drip LP BUSD in there as well. Um, so, you know, I like that, you know, 25 farms doing that, letting that feedback into the other part, 25% for the piggy bank and then 50 drip. I, uh, Personally, I don't know if I would tell somebody to go in the piggy bank, especially with the, the price decline right now. I, well, definitely I, not today. I think once we stabilize, sure. Right now, I'm, well, I'm yeah. doing that. I'm holding off on any of that. So I agree 100%. But that, but that doesn't matter. I mean, if, they have, if they've got a six-month outlook, current price doesn't matter. So the fact that we go from whatever, 70 to 60 or 50, if you're getting in the piggy bank, you still hold that LP, right? You get that value back as soon as the price increases. Yeah, but with the the declining value right now, and also the de declining uh, contract balance, like our daily returns are suffering. And and dr, you know it as well as I, because I'm I'm following your original plan of uh, alternating days, and uh, our our eight week stake that um, we were planning to make 
with at least the initial amount is is not working out so it just seems like um if we were to say, you know, when, that they start once the farms go back live, I would be inclined to say 50, 60% in the faucet and um, probably 30% in the drip garden and then the rest in in the farms to earn dogs and pigs or drip BUSDLP farm. Yep. And that's the other issue. Right what's great is everyone has a different opinion and those yeah. watching are going to make their own opinion. That's what's, <clears throat> what's wonderful about this is everyone could do their strategy based on what they think. And it's great that we all share our views to help with, I think this, I think that, and people are going to make their own decision off that. So I think that's great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's interesting that we all have different, uh, different viewpoints on it. I would go, I would tell them, I think the, I think if they're well-versed in DeFi already, like they've been in a bunch of other projects, that changes my answer. But I'd say 99% of people, this is like their first real project. Right. So in my opinion, I would say I would have them put like 75% into the faucet just to understand the mechanics and get it. In. I mean, it's tough for new people to even understand the faucet, just hydrating, put it back in. How do I claim if I end up needing to claim? Mm -hmm. Like there's just uh, you know, how do I have enough gas in there? So I think if you start complicating it too much and start and introduce people to a complicated ecosystem faster, it's just too much for them. So I would say 75% in the faucet. And then I would get them more involved in a little bit uh, riskier play. I'd probably put 80% on the faucet and I put 20% in, uh, in the garden. And the reason is, is not even so much just to give them access to the leverage, but to plant the seed of, of what an ecosystem does. Like drip, nice you, drip, drip, you can't say it again. Nice pawn. Oh yeah. <laughs> drip. You can't, uh, you can't really do much else with drip unless you pair it up with something else. Right. So really the point of drip is just to cycle through that ecosystem. But what you can do is you can, uh, if you've got that drip BUSD pair, you can start to get people interested in the rest of the ecosystem. So you can explain how once they compound for a couple months, they can start to put that in and then earn pigs. And then what's the purpose of pigs? So it's kind of like the gateway drug into getting into the, to the pig pen and the, the, the farms and the ecosystem over there yeah. without having, having to like teach people how to learn uh, how, all that, that whole thing. Cause it's already, even people that have been in drip for six months or four months or whatever, they're learning about the farm. It seems too, too over their head. So if you throw them into the fire a little bit too early, I think they're just going to say it's too complicated. I'm out. So for me, that's the gateway drug, getting them into the garden and helping them realize that the garden is producing something else that you then move to a different part of the ecosystem to earn pigs that you then move into the pig pen and so just starts them down that path. Yeah, I think that's a really good point that I didn't think about initially is, is trying to figure out how engaged they're going to be. Because um, like I have a couple of neighbors that have signed up under my team for drip, but they're not very active because they're busy with their own lives. And they just kind of, um, you know, saw my Facebook post or whatever and were interested in it. So they tossed in $100 when unfortunately the token was $100. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just trying to remind them to compound twice a week has been enough of a struggle, I think, that you really have to kind of gauge that when you when they're asking about it to see how active they're going to be. For sure. And I think you you should assume that they're lying to you when they when you cut, <laughs> cut whatever their prediction is in half. Oh, yeah. I'm on my phone all the time. No problem. Yeah, absolutely. It's easy to do. So, yeah, people forget to, to compound. And even some of the guys I know, they're just they're just busy, you know, and they compound every few days when they could easily compound twice a day with the amount they have in there. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just that's how it goes. But I think people forget. And then the other side, like I said, there's a lot of people that, that joined up that said, hey, I've got a six month outlook here and this is going to be great. And uh, within a couple of weeks, they started claiming and then you've got the occasional hydrate in there, but it's mostly claims. And they've got, a, you know, they, they could have tripled their balance in terms of tokens, but instead they've drained it down. They're getting closer to max payout and they really they made nothing. Right. They, they took a fat loss. So, um, yeah, I just think 
it's tough to, we can say it over and over again and people can watch our 15 videos, but it's tough to like really get people to understand like the, the, you, you need to play this game the way it's meant to be played. Um, that way you can maximize your ROI. If you want a short-term win, then go buy Shiba or something else at the bottom and, and hope that it just rallies back up or hope Elon starts tweeting about it. But it's the, you know, people, I keep seeing these comments that are like, you know, you, it, um, drips, drips, uh, a scam. There's no way to get rich quick, like overnight. Like there, there's nothing quick not or really passive for us about this. Like we've been putting money in, we're many months in, we've still got at least another six month, you know, outlook to where other, a lot of us are going to be like in the heavy profit range. Uh, we're spending a ton of time building teams in telegram. It's basically like running small business, right? You got mm-hmm. There's a lot of elements to it. So there's, for us, there's not really anything that passive about it. Um, and there's nothing short-term about it either. I mean, we're all long-term in this ecosystem. So for the people that say, get rich quick schemes don't work and drip is a scam. This isn't a short-term thing for us. You know, some people that got in early, maybe could have pulled some profits out quick um, who got in maybe like end of last summer and then pulled a bunch out, you know, over the January timeframe when everything spiked, but for the 99% of us that didn't, uh, it's a longer term play and we're going to utilize the new technology that's out there in DeFi to play the ecosystem and make money, but it's not ultimately that passive and it's not get rich quick. Right. So guys, we're nearing an hour. I think we should probably bring it to an end. I wanted to, I just had a fun idea to end it with a little little uh, gamble here. I thought we would have some fun and uh, try to pick the launch date of, or the relaunch date of the animal farm. Yeah. So the um, each of us will pick a date and time close to wins. And uh, I think the winner will get one whole drip. <laughs> oh man 7th of july 6 p.m july s- 6 p.m Eastern. Uh, Eastern Standard time <laughs> EST, yeah okay forex standard it always happens when i'm asleep mate so it's got to be right i thought maybe you were going to say forex standard time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, that then you'd all, then you'd win no matter what because you, no matter if it came early or late, you'd be right. you'd be dead on. <laughs> I've got a cool clock coming. Listen to this. I've got a clock coming for there. I've got Eastern Standard Time, Central, and Sydney in Australia, where we might have moved to. And I've also got another one, and it's going to be labelled FST, and it's a clock that just does this. <laughs> this spins. That's fantastic. It's going to go viral. You get thousands <laughs> of more subscribers due to that clock. <laughs> All right, Scott, DR, uh, what's your guesses? Oh, I was going to say the 7-2. Um, I'm, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of split, and here's why. Here's my, here's my methodology here. A lot of people are saying there's no chance that he's going to launch the week of the 4th because it's holiday here. I'm kind of of the mind that Forex doesn't recognize normal days or holidays. He doesn't know what day it is, what time <laughs> it is, what the price is. Like, I just think he's like in his own world completely. Um, so I think, I think there's a chance that he could still do it. I don't think he's going to do it on the fifth because, you know, I know that he's got his nephew and stuff like that. So I think they probably are trying to do something for the holiday. Um, but, uh, I think the seventh is a really good, a really good chance. I think it would launch a little earlier in the day, but let me just, let me just, uh, lean heavy into delays and I'll go with the 12th. What time I'll go, um, 4 p.m. Eastern. Okay. DR? You know, it's tough because I'm looking as you as you guys are talking at my calendar and I'm toggling in my brain saying, well, that, what, what's going to happen here? What's Forex? How does he do things, right? And we know this whole next upcoming week of stuff, you know, he loves a week of promos and interviews and stuff. He's going to have a week or so, maybe more of um, maybe having the Dow group testing things and other stuff and, you know, all his normal things. But I was looking at the 12th as well, because, you know, he loves Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's just him. But I was also saying maybe, maybe the seventh, you know, seventh kind of makes sense. It's past the holiday and I was going back and forth, but I will say the 12th, at noon, he's going to say that's when it's going to launch and open up a voice chat. 
and it's going to be delayed and actually start trading at 2.30. It's going to say 12. <laughs> All right, July 12th, 2.30? Yep, that's when it'll actually open. You know, he'll say 12 p.m. Right. Yeah. We're talking about actually like, I know I was, I just want to make that joke because I, you know how he is <laughs> <laughs> for sure. We're going to start a timer so that we can start the next timer. Uh, all right. So I'm going to be Mr. Optimistic uh, and we'll go June 30th. Uh, and we'll go with, let's say uh, 4 PM. So I'm just ask. feeling 4th of July, you say holidays. Do you, I know it's Independence Day, obviously, but do you get the week off work? Is it like, like a week long or a two days? No, or this is the United States, Lee. This isn't, this isn't the UK. We don't get weeks <laughs> off for things. We don't, <laughs> oh. we, don't, we don't go on holiday every two weeks. It's, we don't, we don't have bank holidays every month either. Right. This yeah, isn't we get Canada loads. either. This is <laughs> the US, we barely get holidays. Yeah. We're, we're lucky if we get July 4th off. Oh. If we get weekends. Yeah. Wow. We get every Friday, Monday. Next week it's Monday. Then we'll have Monday, Tuesday. It's brilliant. No wonder yeah. we have to work so hard over here. We're making up for you guys. <laughs> totally. Exactly. That's what it is. That's what we that's what we fought for our independence for, too. So we could work seven <laughs> days a week. Hey, I just want to say one last thing is gonna wrap it up and then you know I'm gonna let um the crypto send us off here. Um, but when you guys are talking about compounding, I wanted to just get this out for everyone's head. And I want to play a quick game for you guys of how powerful the math of compounding is. And we know Forex knows it. Trust me, he gets it. And some people don't think about this. And this is something I learned a long time ago, short game. Um, but, and you may or may not heard this before, but let's see. So you take one penny and it doubles every single day for 30 days. So you start with one cent and you will double it every day. One, two, four, eight. At the end of 30 days, what do you have? What's each of your guesses? It's like 5 million. Three. Uh, how many pennies? One penny doubles every day. You start with one. And at the end of 30 days, what, what do you have? 30 days. How many dollars do you have? Oh, 300,000. It's like 5 million. Is it? Yeah, I would, it's, I'd say 400,000. So you actually have about 10.3 million. <laughs> and on day 20 you still only have about twenty thousand or so remember how look about forex's arc for how yeah. you're paying your bonus <clears throat> in the back of the piggy bank and how it yeah. arcs at the end so do it on a play on a spreadsheet do it on a calculator you see you're you have almost nothing to the last 10 days you, i mean you have money you have 20 grand hey you started with a penny but from 20 grand you go to 10.3 million in 10 days yeah, and that's why I tell everybody uh, that's looking to get in drip, start with the biggest bag that you can, because getting from getting from one to ten is takes a while, but getting from ten to a hundred or hundred to a thousand is significantly less. For sure, that's why we're all watching our account balances ramp up um, <clears throat> super fast. You know, once you once you hit a thousand, it just really you know, and you're getting ten drip mm -hmm. a day, it starts to yeah. stack up. That's why that exponential curve just starts to fly and that's it's just it's great because i don't know for me the excitement is once it starts doubling up and tripling up and just get going super fast for a lot of people they're ready to pull their money out right away i want to see this thing grow i want to see i want to see this thing get close to max payout because yep. you're just raking it in then yeah that's like the garden though right surely i'm at 970 drip right now sorry nick Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm at 970 drip. I'll be hitting a thousand in like three days. Cannot wait. Nice. Okay. That's exciting. I know. I'm excited. I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping that there isn't too many delays here, and we can hang in this ten dollar mark. Just because I think it's good for sentiment. Everyone's pretty positive that the drip is stabilized. So I'm hoping that's the case, and it can hang, and we don't dip any lower. Hoping the bottom's in. Because I think the minute and and let me just plug and shill drip real quick. I think the no minute shilling the farms, alarms. Yeah, <laughs> I think the minute the farms uh, get relaunched, 
I just don't think we'll see another low and drip. There's just too many reasons to u- utilize the tokens and have the ecosystem up. And since nothing else in the crypto world is really working all that well, uh, I think you're going to start to see people pile in. So, and then all the, uh, I've said it in my videos before, all the guys out there that are spreading all the FUD saying we're just exit liquidity and, um, you know, Forex is uh, a scammer and he's just going to pull all the money. He's doing an awful lot of work to get these back up and running to just rug pull when he could have pulled half a million dollars out of the system in TBL. Uh, He'd have been gone so, before. He'd have been yeah, gone. Makes absolutely before. no sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, would have, he would have taken that money, even if it's a hundred million, boom, you're out, you know, you're, you're set for life, even though he, you know, probably already is. But um, so I think the ecosystem, you won't, you know, it won't turn back as soon as the thing gets turned on again. So if you've been waiting on the sidelines, uh, if, $10 drip, $9 drip. I don't know that there's going to be a better opportunity for you. So you got two weeks to get geared up, make your deposit, pick your team and get in the ecosystem before I think everything starts to tick up. Cause we're, you saw on pretty much no news the other day, we rallied up, you know, I don't know what it was, 60% or something, mm. just a big fat jump on everyone just being optimistic. We t- so some real announcements comes out. I think you'll jump ten dollars, fifteen dollars, maybe twenty dollars in a matter of a week, maybe two, and then you'll be mad that you were trying to save two dollars mm-hmm. per token when you know you couldn't capitalize. So DCA in if you're concerned about it, but how much lower could you know could you want the price to go if you're buying into single digits? You know, uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> thank somebody, thank your higher power for allowing you to to pick it up for so cheap. Exactly. Any other mm-hmm. final notes, uh, Lee or DR? No, I just wanted to say, you know, thanks for having me on the show. I really enjoyed myself. It's good to speak to like-minded people and, and listen and, again, educate myself because I've picked up a couple of things and thought, ah, I get it. I get it. Um, you know, we've we, what we've got here is a situation where I think, and I've, I've took some notes earlier on um, what Scott was saying, Doctor was saying, and you, Nick, that when you talk about, <clears throat> education in the space and like i said i'm no educator but someone asked me today in the comments how do i pair up an lp mm-hmm. and this is someone that's been in drip i think you said it's got people haven't got a clue what some things are over here they're just in drip and i haven't actually done a video on i've done it in some videos but i haven't done yeah. how to pair an lp what is an lp and how to break an lp and i think I'm going to use that and probably do something about that because if I said to my mate who has watched my videos and he knows what the force it is, which is great because he's come through the BTC, ETH and BNB barrier into DeFi and he wants to learn more about Drip. If I said to him, pair up an LP tomorrow, he'd probably run run back to Sydney from, yep. from Stafford. So I think uh, I've took some things from what we spoke about, which is fantastic because every day is a school day. and Obviously, that we've got lots more to do because we're going to get questions about bear markets and bull markets and what's drip. Is it going to be here next year? Sustainability, tax vault, all of that. I think we need to, me personally, I'm going to regroup, go back to the start and maybe start trying to educate people who don't know about the system because the, the farms being paused, bear in mind I was February 14th when I got in. They were paused in March, uh, March time, something like that. So I was only dipping my toe into it. But now I've watched all the videos that everyone's done and I know what the power of that farm is and was. I think, like Scott said, 15 and 20s is kind of like where we might find ourselves. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we can buy it at, I mean, what is it right now? I haven't even looked like, what we've been on. 912, it is at the moment. Cheap. So that look at the, the the value of that nine dollars and twelve. If you'd have asked me that in February, I'd have snapped your hand off and bought five grand's worth. So I think you know we've I've learnt my lessons. I'm taking them on board, and this little segment that we've done today has given me another new outlook, which I didn't have an hour and twenty minutes ago. So thanks to everyone uh, who's going to watch it, watched it, and you guys who've put some more things in this massive brain of mine. <laughs> One thing I learned on that, just to hit that topic, is um, and it uh, it came from these guys out here that are that uh, are based here in Utah, but they're super successful in creating courses, and then they teach people how to create courses, and um, uh, you know they made millions and millions of dollars doing that. Extremely mm-hmm. good at it. Um, 
what they what they basically try to instill, and and so I heard this point maybe five years ago, and I thought it was just extremely important. We're all in a different stage. I don't know where I'm at in DeFi. I don't know. I'm at I'm a six out of ten, maybe right. Like there's people who could tell you all about the back end of the smart contracts and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm not that guy yet, but I'm learning more as I go. So for me, not to make content and share any content with anybody. It's, uh, it's kind of starving everyone who is at a five or below, right? Now, there's a lot of people that are at tens, but those guys aren't creating content. A lot of people gain knowledge, but they don't share it. They're either not comfortable sharing it or they want to hoard it for themselves. So if you're creating content and you're, and you're putting yourself out there thinking, I'm not an expert, well, you're a six or a seven or an eight. There's always room for you to learn to bump yourself up, but there's one through five or one through six below you who take those little snippets of information. There's a lot of guys starting out in DeFi that are a one. So to, to, um, to them, you are the expert. They're like split an LP, like uh, show me how to set up a MetaMask wallet. What is right. a MetaMask wallet? Like, so they're so early on in the stage. So you are an expert in the, in, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you just have a smaller audience than, than the, the entire audience out there. So yeah. you got to realize whatever stage you're at now, you know, I'm at maybe like a six or seven, maybe. So there's one through six that I can teach what I've learned and, you know, um, I'll continue to try to increase my knowledge base so I can expand my audience. But I think that's the main thing when you're a content creator, we're not, we're not experts on everything, but we're, but we, we know quite a bit. We've been playing mm-hmm. the space. We spend a lot of time, dedicate a lot of time to it. So um, there's a lot of people out there that we can teach. Yeah. We all, we all start somewhere. Yep. And I don't have much to share here on that end. I mean, you already said a lot of great views. I don't want to repeat a lot of the same things. You guys have shared great info. Last thing I try to leave people with is find people like everyone here and others that you feel can give you good value and give you good insight to give you and teach you, like you just said, about how things work. Um, Understand that in the investing ecosystem and the way things are, Forex has a great ecosystem and drip and everything I think is where you'd want to be. And also on top of that, that even though these times are rough. All the greats, you know, Warren Buffett, right? You buy when when there's fear in the street and you sell when there's euphoria. This is when you want to get in. And it might be hard to stomach. It might be hard to deal with. But if you stomach it, if you can handle it, and like you guys have said, buy and drip at sub 10 and some of these other things and you compound and everything else, when the dawn comes back and when things start to turn around, you are going to be so well set up for yourself if you could just handle this right now. That's my last party. Yeah, we're, we're yep. buying real estate in 2008. Nobody wants to touch it. <laughs> Nobody wants to touch crypto right now. Everyone's scared of DeFi it is the perfect yeah. time to get in. Absolutely. Okay. All right, guys. Well, it's been awesome having you on the DeFi Defenders. Uh, Lee and Scott and DR so great to talk to you, uh, and I'm sure we'll you'll we'll yeah bleh. I'm sure <laughs> we'll have you in future episodes. Again, uh, thanks to all the viewers that are watching us. If you're still watching us, are you? If you are, click that <laughs> like button, click that subscribe button. We're gonna have links to everybody's channels in our in our own uh, descriptions, and we have those. Uh, we have that little contest running with the with the launch dates recorded down for history. And the winner will get one drip from each of us. And just for the fun of it, guys, if you're still watching, uh, throw your guesses down in the comments below. And maybe uh, if you nail it right on or something, we'll, we'll uh, treat you for a little a little airdrop. We'll see what we can do. But uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll, we'll hope to hear from Forex pretty soon. And again, if you guys have, if you viewers uh, have any ideas of different channels that you would like us to feature on the DeFi Defenders episodes, please let us know in the comments. And until next time, don't forget that when you, oh, wait, Uh, (laughs) until next time, we'll see you guys there. Have a great day. See you guys. See you later. Okay. That was an awesome conversation. We really got to talk about a lot of great things. Again, if you're still here, that means that you really appreciate all of this. So what I'm asking here is, again, hit that subscribe button. Let's climb our way up here to 1,000 plus. Also, make sure you subscribe to each one of their channels. Links, like I said, for everything there. We'd love to chat with you further on anything you have to say or, or questions or anything about what we discussed. So join the Telegram group, leave a comment, hit that like button, subscribe. 
do all those great things. Links for everything you need. Appreciate you. Um, I hope you again found great value. It's a co- of course, all of this here is for us to talk to each other, help each other learn. But at the end of the day, also bring value to you who are taking time um, to be here to listen to this for your own investment. And as I always close out, of course, here is to your success.